Hey there guys, TC Mabe. Wanted to bring you another video in the Ninja Bear Studios plugin series. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the configuration of the gameplay ability system plugin and also the Ninja Combat plugin to get those ready for creating additional items for the games that we're going to be setting up. Um, again, you're going to make sure that you download the plugins and install them. We talked about that earlier. You can find them on the marketplace. And when you come into your project, you're going to go into plugins. You're going to type in Ninja, and you should find the ones that you need. So we already had input plugin, um, Ninja input turned on in the first one. And now we're going to do Ninja Combat and Gash. You would turn these on, then restart your project. And basically for the Ninja Gas, the setup is pretty straightforward. Ninja Combat is also pretty straightforward. If you have Ninja Gas installed and all that, it's, they work together seamlessly. Um, Ninja Gas can be used independent of Ninja Combat but you're going to have to build your own attribute sets in C++ to get that set up. And that's not the purpose of this video. I'm going to get a little bit more information about that and try and do a another sub video about setting up your own independent ability system using Ninja Gas. I know that the developer is also working on extending some functionality of Ninja Gas to make that a little bit easier for people who don't have the other plugins. So, uh, We'll be taking a look at that in a future video. Okay, so after we get these turned on, then uh, we would go in here. Now, what we would need to do is configure the Ninja Gas plugin. So we want to go to Edit Project Settings. And what we're looking for in here is under the Asset Manager, we want to add a new index under Asset Manager for Primary Asset Data Types to Scan. And we come down and we just hit the plus button here. That would add a new one. We would drop this down. And what we want to do under Primary Asset Type this is going to be called an Ability Bundle Data, and the asset base class is Ninja Gas Data Asset, which you'll be able to pick from a dropdown. <clears throat> and then it's looking for a directory. You'll expand this out and tell it where to find a directory. Now, you want to build this over here in your project first. So if you look over here in your project, you would create a new folder. So right-click, create new folder call it data and then underneath of that right click and add another folder and call that abilities that's where we're going to be putting our uh, things that we need for this and if we go back in here under project settings asset manager we just want to make sure that we point to that directory and then under the cook rule this should say always cook okay just so that way everything's uh, included and embedded in the game whenever we produce it and other than that, that's all you really need in there for that to be turned on. Now, for the combat portion of this, we have a couple of um, assets that we need to set up and point to. So we'll go through that now. All right, so setting up our ninja combat, we would follow through with some of the uh, air recommendations that are in the guide here, which are I'll show you how to get to that. If you go out to the Fab Marketplace page, and you come down here for Ninja Bear Studio to Ninja Combat, you'll be able to go down and find the official documentation page, which will take you out to here to set up the Ninja Bear Studio plugins. And you just come down to Ninja Combat Setup, and this will tell you how to configure the ability system. So what we need to do is open up our default game INI file, which is going to be in the config folder of our project, and we're going to add these lines to our default game INI. So you can hit this button here to copy those lines. And then inside of your project file, default game INI, you can just right click on content and say show an explorer. And you can go up a directory and you'll be in the config folder. And then your default game INI would be right here. And you can paste those lines at the bottom of this for your, uh, for your project. And also same thing with uh, the next line is going to be for default engine, where we would come down here to set these um, collision channels. So we would copy this. Again, go back to that folder where you have your configs. And under default engine, you can do the same thing down here and paste in the collision profiles for weapons and projectiles. After you have those, you can restart your project, which will now load these back into your game. Um, once you restart everything, then you would be able to go here to your project settings and come down to collision. And we want to set and make sure that we have weapon for ignore and projectile for block. 
And if these names aren't present here, make sure you go up to Ninja Combat first. And you're going to look at Melee Scan Channel and change this to Weapon. And you're going to go to Projectile Channel down here and change this to Projectile. And then just go back and verify under Collision that you have Weapon on Ignore and Projectile on Block. All right, moving on with the rest of the configuration. If we go back to our uh, detailed instructions here, we have a combat attribute set up where we want to add the ninja combat attribute set to a character ability system component. And it says there's sample data to initialize that in the attribute set reference page, which should be ability system attribute set. It tells you there's available ones here. There's actually a JSON file in here, right here. You can expand this out and create a data table to put this in. So what you want to do in here under these gameplay attributes, you can copy this. And um, the easiest way to do this is really to just go and make a new text file. So if I went in here, let's say, I can, you can put it anywhere you want to and then reference it. I'm going to just, I'll stick it under config. If I just said new text document and call this player ability setup or whatever you want to call that thing, I'm going to leave it called TXT for now. I could go into this and paste those contents in, save it. And then as long as you have your extensions exposed, if you don't have that, I think you can go in here under view, um, file name extensions, if you're on a Windows PC, and then just change this from TXT to JSON. And now you'll have a JSON file. And that JSON file, you can pull into your project and create a data table with it. So that would look like this. If I'm, let me go close this project settings window. Um, I had put these under here. So you're making this TB attributes player table. You can either go in here and say that you want to go to miscellaneous data table and create one that's based on attribute metadata like this. So I'll just leave it called do data table. And in here, you can say re-import. And then from your project folder, where we were at, we could go and pull that in. Uh, that folder for me is going to be over here in my D drive, I think. Mine's under NBS Tutorials Config. And there's that JSON file. So that would pull all these attributes into that file just by hitting the re-import and using the one that we did there. And if I didn't want to do it that way, let me delete this. Then another way you could do this is by pulling that JSON file, which I have here in config. You could minimize your project down and just pull this in and drop it into your folder. And then tell it attribute metadata type and say apply to all. And again, that would just create that same thing for you. Two different ways to do that. And I have already done mine, so I'm just going to delete this one. I have mine called TB underscore attributes for the player. Okay. So now that we have that set up, that's basically giving us all of our um, attributes and everything with base values, min values, max values that we can add to later with uh, some functions. And the next part of this in our documentation is that we're going to be able to assign that to, there we go, we assign that to the the um, ability system component, I believe, which is here. So this data asset for Ninja should have a reference to this TB attributes and where we do in this data abilities folder, you right click and go down to Ninja Bear Studio and under Ninja Gas, you would make a gas setup which I've done here, and I called mine abilities underscore player. And in there, you make your attribute set class the ninja combat attribute set. And you point to the attribute table for TB underscore attributes player. And then you can create an array element under default gameplay effects. And in here, we're going to make a gameplay effect class for replenish stamina. And it'll just be right now at level one. After we have that configured, then the next thing we want to do is we want to put this as a reference in our controller, I believe. Let me see. 
the third person blueprints we had are actually is it our player state? Yeah, player state ability system component. So this player state, if you don't have one, has to be created as a child of Ninja Gas player state. So to do that, you would right click, you can go to blueprint, and you can go Ninja Gas player state is going to be the parent of this object. So if you select that, it'll create a new one that's based on Ninja Gas player state with the ability system component in here. And then you would point that to the default ability setup of your abilities for the player. Okay, so if, once you have that configured, then in your world state, world settings, you want to go down to your player state class and make sure that that's pointed to your BP player state. Now, I know that sounds like a lot of stuff, but what you're doing is you're creating a player state that's pointed to the ability system component. The configuration for the gameplay ability system has all the attributes in it from the data table that are referenced in your asset manager. And putting all that together basically gives you a, a setup where you can reference all these things and initialize them and get them prepared for your character to be able to use them. If everything worked the way that it should, the last part of this is you have a character and your third person character you should be able to then add a Ninja Combat Manager on here. A Ninja Combat Weapon Manager you can come on here also. And under Interfaces, you want to add, let's say under Class Settings, you want to come under um, Implemented Interfaces and add the Combat System Interface. And when you add the Combat System Interface, you can come over to the interfaces here and you're going to pull up the one that says get, where's it at? Get, um, get combat manager. And you want to pull Ninja combat manager down into that as the return value. And if you pulled in the combat weapon manager, you can also do the get weapon manager component and pull in Ninja Combat Weapon Manager. And to add these to your character, you just hit Add and type in Ninja Combat Manager. Pull that up over here and, and bring it in. So with all those in there, I think I actually had one real quick I need to fix. I think I had one in there for a Combo Manager component. I don't think that's supposed to be in there. I don't think that's the right thing on there. But anyway, once that's set up, if you hit Play... And uh, you can hit the tilde key, which is to the left of the one, and it'll pop up this little this little menu. And you can type in debug show ability, or is it show, it might be show debug, hold on. Show debug. Yeah, show debug. Sorry about that. Ability system. And I'm just going to hit the up key to finish typing that in. And hit enter. And what that should do is if everything worked well, you'll see that you have all of your information over here on the left-hand side. I'm trying to get that to where you can see it. I'm going to hit shift F1 to get my mouse back. But you can see over here you have um, initialization for your, your different attributes and statistics and everything that are associated with that ability system where we pulled that tag library in for the uh, ability system component configuration. If you get stuck with any of this stuff, what I will tell you is that under the documentation for this, if you go right under Guides, Configure Gas, there is a video here to configure the gameplay ability system. And these are some of the better tutorial videos I've seen from a developer on how to install their stuff and how to configure it. The only thing that gets a little tricky in here is that because you're installing two things at the same time, you're adding Ninja Gas and Ninja Combat. There's parts of this you'll do, and then you're going to have to jump down here to where the Ninja Combat instructions are. And then when you get done with that, you're going to be jumping back up to some other places to configure things or whatever. But if you follow this video, 
And don't make the mistake I did. I I would see things on the screen. I'm like, oh, where did that come from? I got to go create this thing. This is missing or that's missing. It's not missing. What it is is he just hasn't explained it to you yet, and he will. If you just wait and watch the whole video, I would recommend watching it through one time. They're very, very uh, comprehensive and very short. This is like a five or six minute video that goes through all the stuff we just did. And if you just watch it all the way through and then come back and go through the steps with it, you'll find that it's very simple and very straightforward. So that gets us in position now that we can start creating our weapons, which is the next step in here to create melee weapons and then our melee attacks and so on and so forth. So we're just basically following right through this guide. If you guys want to jump ahead, you can. I'm going to try and go through it by way to take it a little slower and, and present some things for you as we go. But uh, that should get you up and running with the configuration of the gameplay ability system and the ninja combat system, which again are paired to work together seamlessly. Hopefully this video helps somebody and uh, we'll see you in an upcoming video. Again, these are partnership videos with DigiBear Studios. They've provided me with the plugins um, and the trade-off is I get to use them to build stuff and hopefully show you guys how some of that works with what I'm doing. Okay, you guys have a great day and we'll see you again soon.